quaint Fredericksburg, Virginia on the 5th of May, nonetheless. What a great place and a great time to find Fiesta Ware, our favorite radioactive ceramic. It was created first in 1936 by the Homer Laughlin Company, which continued until World War II halted production because uranium needed to be used elsewhere. Production resumed in the late 40s, I believe 1946, and ended in 19, uh, 1973, I believe. The first production before World War II used natural uranium, whereas the second uh, run of production and the third run of production uses de used depleted uranium. We're going to go downtown to some of the wonderful antique shops and see if we can find a couple pieces. With all the depression glass, Vaseline glass, canary glass, and uh, Fiesta ware that are in the shops in downtown Fredericksburg, you probably have more uranium than the uh, Ganado Uranium District in Arizona. But anyhow, I'm going to take my camera in, and of course, uh, because it is a quasi-public establishment, meaning that it is open to the public and there are no posted signs saying that you cannot videotape or use a camera until I'm told otherwise I can use a camera. And then of course I have to shut it off if they tell me. And if they see me at the Geiger counter they might tell me to, you know, get the hell out. But what the hell, it's Cinco de Mayo, let's have a party, right? Plenty of fiesta, but no orange. Truckloads of depression. More fiesta, but no orange, not even the white. I have to get some depression glass. Look at this little thing. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Lots more of it too. Alright, I have purchased from an antique shop a piece of Fiesta Ware Red. And, and it's quite hot. Right there is full of depression glass. As is one down there, full of depression glass. Alright, and now I'm wandering back to the car and then to the laboratory with the Fiesta Ware. I don't know if it's depleted uranium or natural uranium, goodness, I think this one's old enough to be natural. But the spectrometer will tell the story. Because the spectrometer knows the truth. A Geiger counter can only tell me that it's radioactive. But anyhow. Virginia is such a nice place. Everything on Earth you could ever imagine is illegal, which is kind of amusing. But, at least from an aesthetic point of view, but of course this is the south of America, and the south always looks better than the north. I'm sure I'll catch flack for that statement, yet it's true. Alrighty, well this has been a good Cinco de Mayo. I, um, while I was out getting my Fiesta Ware, which I'll show you in a second, I found this. Let's see if you can see that okay in the um, video. Look at this big crystal, giant crystal. It's called uh, selenite, and apparently it's calcium, silicon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and some more oxygen put together. Interesting. There's nothing really particularly dangerous that I can tell about it, but it is quite, quite lovely to look at. Apparently it's related to gypsum. I'm just looking it up. Neat! Now let's look at the Fiesta Ware piece. Put that down. Here's what I got. Standard piece of Fiesta Ware. However, it does not have a mark on the bottom of it, so it could be a knockoff. There should be a, um, was it Homer Laughlin, I believe? It should be Homer, Homer Laughlin. It should say that on this, but it does not. Regardless, let's see what kind of reading we get. While in the store, 
I didn't get much of a reading at all. This little thing is about 18, 19 counts. You put it on top, it detects it a bit, even more so like this. Let's give it a minute and see how high we get with this thing. Alright, so we've been running this now for a little while, and let's see, at 1,080 counts per minute, give or take. So my guess is about three to four thousand in the pancake, but we'll find out in just a minute. Not too much. Now the CDB 700. Let's see how it does. Off scale. Go to times ten mode. Let's see if you can see by the way the dial on that. Eh, not too well. So let's prop it up just a bit, like that. Now, and we'll lower the um, camera just a bit, so you can get a better view of this sort of thing. Okay. So on the time ten, times 10 scale, with the beta shield open, contact, we're hard over. So we'll go to times 100. So we're just barely hard over. It looks like we should have been getting So now we're looking at uh, 0 to 30,000. So looks like we're getting 4 3 4,000 counts per minute. Which makes sense because in times 10 now we're getting 0 to 3,000 and we're right at the peak of that. So we're just a hair over 3,000 counts a minute. Gamma. Go back to the times 1. We're not getting much gamma at all. Hmm. Virtually none. Okay. And now finally, the most effective tool, the pancake. Let's pop that up so you can see it. Now, what? Sensitive, don't you think? In fact, let's cut down the sound. I don't want to scare the hell out of a neighbor. <laughs> and as you can see, 25.7 thousand. 26 thousand. Nearly 27 thousand counts a minute. 26. Okay, so it's varying. The energy scale is basically of almost no use at this point. It will read 8 uh, millirankin per hour or 7 millirankin per hour, but that's not really accurate at all. Let's test and see how much of this eliminates. We're going to take this SE International Calibration Certificate. Irony. We're getting about 26,000 counts. That's cutting out all the alpha. In fact, let's double it up to make sure we get all of the alpha. There we go. Give it a few seconds to park back up again. We go on from 26 to 27 to about 18 and a half, 17 and so we'll call it 18. We'll call it 26 to 18. So that's about 8,000 counts a minute dropped off the top from alpha. It varies a bit though, due to the random nature of radiation. Interesting. Now let's put up something that will block the beta. This steel plate will block the beta. It will actually probably cause some secondary brumpster lung, meaning I'll probably actually cause some additional radiation as a result of having this plate here. Not too
too much in the realm of gamma. But we'll see what the spectrometer has to say about this. Using the spectrometer, we can also determine if this is a depleted uranium versus natural uranium due to the, due to the isotopic equilibrium that we'll find inside of it. I'll take a uh, take a uh, attempt at trying to actually calculate the dose from this thing, but that'll be a side project, which of course um, will be more or less just for me. I might share the results with you guys though, but um, of course I'm not qualified to calculate dose. It would be just kind of a me doing it on the side. Um, but regardless, what an interesting 5th of May. Now we can have a Fiesta with this Fiesta wear. But I will not be putting my uh, guacamole in it. It's already green enough. It doesn't need to be more so. Regardless. Alrighty. Let's see what the back side is like. Same sort of thing. 29. 28. Nice. Not the right, not the sort of thing you want to eat off of, right? Alrighty, here we are back in the lab. As many of you know, um, Nikonami, my, my detector, has been taken offline for an upgrade with these large blocks of lead. And I haven't gotten to that point yet, so I wasn't going to do any testing, but the Fiestaware is so powerful and so potent that I don't really need to shield it for the testing and remove the background. I mean, it would be nice to do, but it's so powerful you can easily see what it is. And so just for giggles, I just quickly constructed this. Most of this lead is actually to shield me. There's the, there's the Fiestaware and there's the detector up against it. The gamma rays are coming from here. They're hitting a piece. Of, they're they're hitting the uh, detector crystal. The crystal is producing light. The amount of light is proportionate to the energy of the gamma. The light is then hitting a photocathode and producing a burst of electrons. The number of electrons is proportionate to the amount of light, which is proportionate to the gamma. The electrons go up this photomultiplier tube. There's ten stages, gaining more and more energy, but still being proportionate to the energy of the gamma. Those then fly down the little tube here. Or not the tube. The tube. Yes, the tube. They fly down the wire here, if I get my brain working, and they go into the device. And by the way, this is a piece of plastic, it's not a piece of depression glass. Um, and then the, the device calculates the amount of energy that's in each gamma and produces a spectrum. And this is a clock, I mean a clock, a uh, temperature gauge to tell me the temperature. So there's a little Fiesta wear piece, and I also have an aluminum beta shield put in front of it to block the betas. And it's, um, it's pretty potent, but if you skip back here just a little bit, it kind of drops. And behind the behind the lead, it nearly stops. I have my wallet cards, my uh, nuclear wallet cards. This is the awesomest thing ever they sent me when I joined the American Physical Society, which is really really nice. So anyway, um, now looking at the screen here, let me drop this down a bit. You can actually look and see a pretty good, um, pretty pretty fair um, reading off of this guy right here. Down here in the corner. I'm looking at around 19 and a half keV from uranium 235, and then um, let's see up here at the top. I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Let's see what we have here. I had to go look these up. Uh, right up here at the top, you're looking at about 63.29 keV from thorium 234, which is just beginning to form an isotopic equilibrium. The reason is if you look at the um, Uranium 238 decay spectrum. This is a government chart, so you can show it. Uranium 238, uranium, uh, thorium 234 is next, then protactinium 234. So it's actually normal to expect to find this to be right here because the isotopic equilibrium is beginning to form. Next up on the list, right here, this peak is at 95, so that's 92.38 and 92.8 keV again from the uh, thorium 234. Moving on down to this little guy right here, that's at 143.76 keV, and that's uranium-235 again. And now moving over to here, this big guy right here is at about 185.71 keV, and that's uranium-235. The uranium-235 is pretty high, so I'm going to go with this is probably natural uranium. 
because it doesn't have uh, the natural uranium would be would remain in isotopic equilibrium because of the fact that it has not been depleted as a result of enrichment processes or being you know spent fuel or something, and it's also not going to be removed because chemically it's the same as uh, regular uranium. So as far as the chemical extraction process, they're going to get rid of the red, the lead, and the um, bismuth and stuff, but they won't get rid of that. So there it is. And um, last but not least, we should have protactinium. And if you look down the spectrum, you'd expect to see it here and here, and you don't. But let's just scroll, and what I'm doing is I'm changing, if you see I'm changing the numbers on the side here, if you can see that the numbers are changing, 300, 320, uh, no, 380, 320, 256, 192, scroll down until these are down in the single digits. So now I'm just scrolling, and if you watch when you scroll it, see the peak beginning to form? And there's another one starting to form off to the side here. Let me put in the grid so you can see it. Normally, if I were doing an analysis, I might not even, I might ignore this particular one because it's too faint, but I know exactly what I'm looking for. And in fact, let me smooth the peaks a bit. Smooth data, you can see it forming. See? See how it forms? Let's put it up here in logarithmic view and see if you can, now you can't see it in logarithmic view. <laughs> but if you, if you do like this, you can. So as you can see, that's what would become protactinium 234M at 766.36 keV and protactinium 30, the 34M at 1001.03 keV. That's what they'd probably be, most likely. And these are the obvious ones that kind of stand out. So we already knew what this was going to be, which made this really simple. I didn't really have to think too much for this one. It was obviously uranium, is which is a little bit different than capturing stuff in the wild. Like if you're testing your rain, because if you're testing like your rain water, then you actually have to do a little bit of guesswork. But anyhow, there you go. Fiesta Red. Well, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, it's quite amazing how much uranium is out there. Happy Cinco de Mayo!